I just love mech games, and I think that to all things together, uh, Mech Warrior Five with Merc Tech, with TT Rules AI, with the infantry mod, make the ideal mech sim for me. So I'm very, very, I'm very sad that I didn't turn off auto update, and the game updated, and it broke all my mods. But I'm at the same time I'm okay because I'm very happy to have been able to share it and to stream it and to make videos about it. I think that Mech 5 and these mods all together make just a truly special and singular game. Just one you don't see that often. So, Mech Warrior 5. It's a pretty good game. We like it around these parts. We especially love it with Merc Tech and TT Rules AI and other mods like Roth's Armies and Darker Knights and all kinds of cool mods we love to use with Mech Warrior 5 to make it align more with our tastes our preferences and the great thing about mech 5 is they're updating it they're adding DLC and uh, we love it when they do that uh, so what we do us mod users is we go into if we have the game on the epic game store we turn off auto update naturally of course we turn off auto update except I didn't so the game updated and broke all my mods and the epic game store does not allow you to revert back to an earlier version of the game hey uh epic um get on that maybe you should fix that big fat problem so but that's okay that's okay because what we have for you here is an after action report on our experience with Merc Tech, which was excellent. We go over why the hardcore sim aspect of Merc Tech aligns with my feelings on Battletech, how I imagine the world of Battletech to be. We go over the essential nature of TT Rules AI, and we demonstrate enemy behavior that you will not find in vanilla mech warrior 5 that greatly enhance mech 5 it makes you feel like you're there you feel like an inner sphere mech pilot and it really turns mech 5 into a transcendent game and uh we talk about some other mods and stuff as well so enjoy this after action report The story isn't totally offensive. I mean, if you stay out of the story's way, it'll pretty much stay out of your way. The whole goal of this entire endeavor was to showcase um, not only Mech Warrior 5, which is a game I think is really good, but mostly to showcase Merc Tech, which is, in my opinion, essential. Now, people go one of two ways with modding Mech Warrior 5, right? They either go with yet another mech lab, which I mean, by all accounts, it seems super awesome. Um, or they go with, uh, or, or they go with Merc Tech. You know, it's kind of the ways that you go. So, um. You can see what the, the algorithm is uh, showing me here on the side. <laughs> so go ahead and make fun of the algorithm, but or make fun of my algorithm. So that yeah, that was the whole idea, the whole goal: showcase Merc Tech. Uh, but more than that was actually to show off TT Rules AI as well. Now I know that TT Rules AI works without Merc Tech. 
Um, and if this has changed, if all this has changed, let me know. But uh, I might look at yet another mech lab later. Later, I am interested in yet another mech lab. It seems really great. But while TT rule is TT rules AI will give certain benefits to just playing the vanilla game, the fullness of it, the holistic application of TT rules AI as of when I was playing this game is only found in Merc Tech. Most obviously is found in the mech lab and how on every mech that you can outfit in the mech lab you can also assign a role. And so TT Rules AI has several roles that a mech can embody. You got your brawlers, you got your juggernauts, you got your snipers, you got your missile boats, skirmishers, scouts, so on, right? Ambushers, and that's all. And it's so great to be able to change a mech's role in the mech lab. Outfit it for more long range, you know. That's what I did with the Marauder. I turned the Marauder into, well the Marauder was kind of a sniper at first, but then I switched it to a brawler when I put the AC-10 on it and, and changed out the PPCs for large lasers. And then I switched it back to a sniper when I put the Gauss rifle, when I found a Gauss rifle, put that on there with the PPCs. Um, and so that's really great. And so the AI is honestly the thing that most thrilled me. The Merc Tech stuff was great, and there was plenty of thrills to be found there too. But really, the TT Rules AI part of this whole thing was what what elevated this game to a whole other level, in my opinion. So we're, I want to kind of divide it into two, and then we'll talk at the end. Uh, about some other things because I was not only using those two mods. I was using a couple other mods as well So we're gonna start by talking about Merc Tech Why is Merc Tech so great? Is there any mech lab stuff in this one? There is sure Okay, cool, so we can start off here. So here's what what Merc Tech gives you Merc Tech overhauls the mech lab, right? Um, changes all you can, I mean my stupid Kilroy is in the way of the list, but if you've played MechWarrior 5, you know the list. The list is over here of, of um, your items, your components, your equipment available either in your inventory or in the market. Now this is pretty handy how they divide it all up by not only category, but also specific weapon type. That's really nice. Um, and with Merc Tech, you can do things like change the engine. Uh, sorry change the gyro, you know, you can change out the cooling system, uh, you know, it's pretty robust. Now my understanding is that yet another mech lab goes, goes crazy with this kind of thing, and that's cool, but I have to admit that in Merc Tech I appreciate the restraint, I appreciate that you still have to work with the chassis that you're given. I think that that's pretty important for what I want to get out of a mech warrior game because as most of us know in the BattleTech universe of which mech warrior is a part they're not really switching out main weapons on the fly like you do in a mech warrior game that's not common practice and I think according to lore it's inadvisable I think you would, it would require like factory level facilities to be able to do that but Regardless, the customization has become such an important part of a mech warrior. Uh, well, well, all the BattleTech games. I mean, the recent BattleTech game had the same thing. Really robust um, customization based on the type of thing that we've seen ever since Mech Warrior 2. Uh, and Mech Warrior 2 was really the first one to let you customize your mechs. Before that, with the tactics games that came out in the 80s and 90s, or the RPG and the tactics game, rather. I don't think there was mech customization in those. Certainly the first mech warrior from the late 80s had no customization. You could only manage your mech's repairs and manage the ammo. Mech warrior 1, by the way, great game still. 
Like, obviously, if you look at it, it's silly, kind of, but it's such a great game. You know what MechWarrior 1 looks like? Nineteen eighty nine. Shout out to Squeegee McCoy. I don't know if you're cool or not, but this is what Mech Warrior One looked like. By the way, if you play Mech Warrior One now, it's still a lot of fun. There's a Warhammer he's fighting. I mean you can tell what these mechs are, right? There's a Battlemaster. Oh yeah, there's a Marauder. We're in a Locust, I believe. Yeah, I think the melee laser and two machine guns would be the Locust. There's a Locust bumping over someone. Mech Warrior 1 rocked. And although it didn't give you all the super robust customization, at the time, just managing your, your weapons, you had to go on multi-mission campaigns, you had to make sure you had enough weapons you were bringing with you. Cool game cool game. Better story than Mech 5, too. Now, with Merc Tech, you also get so much granularity in your, in your weapon systems, particularly, especially your auto cannons. That's really where you see the biggest level of granularity is in the auto cannons. So you see here, we have an AC-10 Pontiac, made by the Pontiac company, that takes 90 millimeter ammunition. You can get an AC-10 made by Kaliyama that takes like 110 millimeter ammo and there are so many different bore sizes of ammo it's not just like you got your 80s your 90s your 120s your 210s no it's like you have AC2 from 37 millimeter to 40 millimeter to 50 millimeter to 60 millimeter to 70 millimeter to 80 millimeter. I'm not kidding. To 90 millimeter, and then you have your AC5s that go from 60 millimeter to. <laughs> it's just like every 10. It's like every increment of 10 almost, where you get like another size of ammo that your auto cannon takes, and that means that you need to find that ammo for it. I cannot put AC-10 120mm ammo in this AC-10 90mm Pontiac. I can't do it. And now, honestly, just that alone, I would completely understand putting people off of Merc Tech. Because I was pretty frustrated in the early game with how, like, I would go from system to system just trying to find a certain ammo type <clears throat> before I built up a decent stock of all the different ammo types. And I just wouldn't be able to find it. And it's rough. It's really rough. But that gets to my main point about Merc Tech. Which is that Merc Tech does something that I love most in games. Particularly games that are supposed to look like and feel like simulators. What is a simulator? Mech 5 is supposed to be a mech pilot simulator. Even though it's not real life, this is still supposed to simulate something. And if you're simulating something, in my opinion, you must have the option to take away concessions to the player. Now, I love flight sims. I've always played flight sims. And all the best flight sims have options you can turn on or off to give certain concessions to all different play types. If you play IL-2 Sturmovik, one of the most advanced World War II flight simulators that's ever existed, you can make it play like Crimson Skies, pretty much, by turning off all the physics, turning off all the simulator stuff, and make it play really arcadey. You can do that, and that's really neat, but I prefer to play it with a certain level of realism, and that means that the game has to not care about how I feel about it. And I like all types of games. I like arcade games, I like platformers, I like fun console games, I like first person shooters, but I also like simulators, and if I'm playing a simulator, that means that I'm in the mindset of the game not caring about me. I need it to not care about me, or else I feel pandered to. I don't feel good about it. I don't feel good if I feel like this game that is supposed to challenge me gives me a break or throws me a bone. And so, when I imagine how it would be to be a mercenary company in the Battletech universe, a desolate, 
awful setting, I would expect the possibility of running low on ammo and not being able to find it for months. That creates a narrative. It's satisfying to push through that challenge and to adjust your approach and to adjust your strategy. And it makes it feel real. It makes it feel like you really are overcoming something. In a simulator, I need to feel that. If I'm playing IL-2 Sturmovic, and I'm playing in a twin-engine fighter, and one of my engines gets shot and becomes inoperable, I need to fight the plane to limp it back home to survive. I don't want it to fly nice, even though I lost an engine. I want the plane to. I want to struggle flying the airplane. If I'm playing Mech Warrior, and I can't find 90 millimeter ammo for my Wolverine or if I do you know what you do what most people know about nowadays go up to that one system in the corner of the star map and automatically get a Star League era Wolverine that has like an ultra auto cannon and double heat sinks and an XL engine all this advanced technology from the beginning of the game well good luck finding ammo for your ultra auto cannon buddy now I love that because it makes that ultra auto cannon it's rarity and the rarity of his ammo so precious and it makes you not even want to use it or like if you use it it makes you really want to baby it that's what I need from something like a mech warrior game with the mercenaries moniker and so the fact that there's so much to consider and there's so much that pushes against you I love and I cannot get enough of that um, I think that that is, that's like one of my favorite things, um, about this. And so you see here we have, uh, Merc Tech also gives us these quirks, including our role, which is a skirmisher role, right? You can change that out, so you, you can make your, the Wolverine a sniper, if you wanted to. Uh, it wouldn't make much sense for this mech, but if you could figure it out, you could do it. Um, the other thing about Merc Tech see here what can I show yeah it's right here okay check this out look at this ammo explosion you don't see this in mech 5 it's this is a Mertek thing this is another reason why Mertek is essential because experiencing this kind of ammo explosion is so amazing so if you look here's my archer this is my friend and it sucked that he died but I was so thrilled when this happened everybody was overheating our mechs and this archer, this happened to this archer, right? When he blew up, when, or when he overheated too much, he has all this long range missile ammo, and this is what happened, right? Look at this. Look at that, boom, boom. He blows up, and all the ammo cooks off. And the ammo just keeps cooking off forever. And it will hit buildings and destroy them. It's so good. It's such a cool thing. And so that's the other thing that Merc Tech offers. Um, you know, that other, that Vanilla Mech Warrior 5 and other mods don't really offer. So that pushback, <clears throat> the ammo explosion, the danger of the ammo explosion, how the ammo can still fly off and hit you and do damage to you. When you're talking about a simulator, that's what I look for. So that's Merc Tech. Um, no, that's not all there is to say about Merc Tech. Merc Tech uh, does one other thing that I love. That is, and, it, and it's part of the, the cranking the simulation dial all the way till you, you can't crank it anymore. And that is they go really granular with the parts on your mech as far as what can get damaged or destroyed. Now in Mech Warrior, it was always the case that if you had equipment stored in a part of your body, it could get critical hits on it and it could get destroyed even while that part of your mech was intact. So if you had, let's say, a heat sink in your arm, which in most cases you probably don't want to do that, if you if 
you can get the armor low enough in the arm, some of those hits can hit, go through and hit the heat sink and kill the heat sink, even though your arm is still there. And then of course there's always a possibility of blowing the whole arm off the mech as well. But in Merc Tech, it goes down into the actuators. You can hit your hip actuator and it will it might affect something like your turning radius, but your leg will still function. Or you, you might get hit in your ankle actuator and it might affect something like acceleration or maybe your top speed or something, but your leg is still intact. And then of course eventually you can just get your leg destroyed, right? Like you would expect in a Mech Warrior game. But the fact that you can critical so many little pieces in the mech really amps up that simulation factor. I love that. So now we're going to move on. We're going to talk about why TT, TT Rules AI is an essential mod, in my opinion. I mean, Merc Tech, I can understand you not liking all the detail or like all the... It is much more difficult. All of this makes the game way more difficult. I mean a lot more difficult. So I can understand that not being your preference, but I do think TT Rules AI will be a good uh, fit for most people who play this game. And to demonstrate, let's look at this little sequence here. Details are goaded, yes, yeah, that's, that's that's true, Manic. Uh, so this is what you're about to see is not a function of Merc Tech, but of TT Rules AI. Nope. So he, he's just trying to escape, right? I mean, I'm faster than him. He knows that he's trying to escape, and he's trying to get his buddy to help. Luckily, I have a friend helping. But see, when I broke off, he turned and started attacking me. But that's not really the part that I want you to see. All right, so here's the assassin. There's a, there's a, this is me. What's up? This is me. This is, I'm doing this all for YouTube, man, and this is a YouTube video. So you see him both jumping around, but the assassin is getting close to me while the griffin is trying to create distance, because the griffin is a sniper. The assassin is a skirmisher. You've seen me before, Manic. What are you talking about? Is that you? Come on. Do the thing. Well, I was wearing a beard back then, Manic. Maybe that's it. Or maybe I'm just old, bro. I am pretty old. See that? He's sniping me. So the Griffin is sniping me like he's supposed to while the Assassin is engaging me and distracting me, you know? So the reason why I disengage so much is not only to, for, to, to survive, because I'm in a light mech, but also because my machine gun has a magazine that has to reload, and it reloads round by round. So you see that? He's staying there, he's like, he's kind of trying to bait me. <laughs> I like that sequence, it's a good action movie sequence of like barely having the Mrs. Monsieur, I love that. But see that? Rattling around the corner, he blasted me right in the cockpit. That was a that was a headshot. So I killed him there. I think I I don't remember what I did to be honest. But this guy, look, this guy is staying far away. He's not getting close to me. I was only close to him before cuz I forced it on him. I got close to him. See, he's ready for me. See, he knows where those trees are. He, they know that if you yeah, I one tap that guy pretty much. He knows um, to stay in the trees and look. So we broke line of sight, and my sensors are not picking him up either. There we go. I pick him up there, but look, he's waiting for me.
You do not see that behavior in Mech Warrior 5. In vanilla Mech Warrior 5, you do not see that kind of behavior. Certainty that without TT Rules AI, he would just try to walk in. See, I just pretty much said it right there, too. So now I'm now forcing the issue because he's got another target, another one of my, another friendly came by and distracted him. But you get the idea, right? Uh, here's another thing about TT Rules AI. You'll see some good teamwork, and you'll see I don't know if, what the exact like me mechanics of this are, but you'll see that just the way the AI behaves, um, it makes it seem like they're working in coordination, and that's just Man, I love I love to see that in video games, honestly. Both the danger that the enemies give you in TT Rules AI and the stakes of Merc Tech and how dangerous, how much more dangerous everything is in Merc Tech. Things like this, what you're seeing me do now here to set up, are much more essential. So in Mech 5, you almost never see anybody telling their lance mates to move to a certain area. But I told my archer, who has a yep, missile boat right. roll... Therefore, he is fire support. He's second line. He's not, he's not going to walk toward the enemy. I told him to go there. Because one thing TT Rules AI allows for is for you to place snipers and missile boats in a spot. They'll basically stay there. They might try to move to gain line of sight, but they'll basically stay there. And they will just shoot at the guy. And that's exactly what you want your second liners to do. And in Mech 5, they won't do it. In Mech 5, they will walk toward the enemy while they shoot their long-range missiles until they're just close. So I told him to go there, behind these, these little, like, Thank you. section of walls, right? And you'll see the enemies do something similar like here, actually. Again, even though one of the mechs in here has jump jets, there's a crab with jump jets. This guy. Okay. okay, so here's a really, really special crab. A, a crab, it's a crab 275L. It's not one you see very often. I mean, it's a Star League era crab, and we're fighting against Comstar, so it makes sense they would have an advanced mech like this. So there he is. So my guys are shooting at him, and my missile boat is staying back fighting, but the enemy is doing the same thing. So watch, I'll come up here, and I'll see in the back, that's a rifleman, which is a sniper mech. And the crab is coming to us. He knows he's about to die because <laughs> we have a firepower advantage, even though he is a dangerous mech. But he'll go straight to the back line. He's going for the archer. My archer's backing off, trying to create more distance. Oh, I missed. But the point is, the crab is here distracting us while the rifleman is taking shots at us, too. So now we can focus on the rifleman, you see. I shut down here, but yeah, now we just focus on the rifleman. The rifleman is by himself. Rifleman don't have much armor, so we can take them out pretty quickly. Uh, you'll see a similar dynamic right here. So you see, the, this is the same dynamic. We have a heavy brawler, and here we have a small, lighter skirmisher. This Wolverine is a skirmisher, and he's going right for me. He's breaking our lines, making us turn around, and distracting us. And the, luckily, the Black Knight the enemy Black Knight could not get line of sight on us to take advantage. And we took out the Wolverine pretty quick. You see the Black Knight over here working his way toward us. But this Wolverine's already, like, gone, right? Like, he's... He gets eaten up pretty quick. Good. But you see what they're trying to do. Good, good. Like, this is only a two-mech, like, half-lance, right? And we're a full lance. So it probably wasn't advisable what you did, but you see what the AI is meant is is, is trying to to accomplish, and it's just so good. Uh, anyway, now that <clears throat> that was that, uh, here's one more cool thing about TT Rules AI, just down to individual like um, mech piloting. Uh, I won't have the sound for this; it's not really necessary. There, here it is. Okay, watch. This is a blackjack who already knows he's screwed. This is a sniper mech. But he already knows he's screwed, because he can't really outrun the Black Knight, even though the Black Knight is not a fast mech. The Blackjack is slow, too, even though it's much lighter. So what, he's, what he does is he kind of reverts to a skirmishing type thing. He shuts down there briefly from overheating, but then he starts back up, and he's just trying to stay alive. 
And so what he does here, you'll see, he he goes for a maneuver that could work, but he barely miscalculates it, and I love this moment. He goes up, and he just, if he would if he would have cleared that little part, he would have jumped into behind behind the wall, thereby avoiding certain death. And you see blackjacks all the time in other similar mechs, sniper mechs with jump jets pop tarting. They'll pop up, they'll deliver a salvo, and they'll drop back behind cover. They'll, sh they'll, they'll jump up with their jump jets, deliver a salvo, drop back behind cover. It's wonderful. In almost any game, seeing behavior like that kind of thrills me. So, to end this little part here, I want to share real quick one of my favorite sequences in this entire playthrough. And all this comes, this is honestly, I don't think this demonstrates too much about Merc Tech or TT Rules AI. I think this is more of a demonstration of MechWarrior 5 and how freaking awesome MechWarrior 5 can be. And just how incredible and cinematic and intense MechWarrior 5 can be. So check this out. This, by the way, I can say this, this mission is from Coyote's Mission Pack, which isn't completely compatible with Merc Tech, unfortunately, but that, that guy, um, it's just one developer, I think, has done some really cool, like, custom missions, and I, I wish it was more compatible with Merc Tech, but it's just not possible right now. But you'll see this sequence, for me, demonstrates, yes, how cool TT Rule, or how cool Coyote's Mission Pack is, and also just how cool Mech 5 can be. So here this dropship is coming down and the point is we've just rescued a bunch of survivors. I, I apologize for the video quality by the way. And um, they're going to they're gonna have a certain amount of time to load the survivors onto the dropship to get taken away. So you'll see right here actually right here just begins my favorite sequence of, of this whole playthrough. Here, I'll do it with the sound. This is easy-ish because the dropship has very powerful defenses like that ERPC shot right to that Wolverine. Luckily the dropship here has some really good guns on it that help us out. Ooh, this guy's getting torn apart. I love the real-time shadows too. I don't know if that's a Mech Five thing or if that was that come from comes from my mods. I really it it was either an update or a mod because when I first played Mech Five, those dynamic lights were not happening. I was trying to go for the headshot, but that was bad because I'm in a very light mech and I was just holding still. Not a good place. That's not a good tactic. is a vehicle behind me. I heard the video quality looks better for you than it does for me. As all scout. But man, you still get a sense of that real-time lighting. No, 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 it no. looks great. Not dying here like this. So here I'm almost dead. I'm just trying to escape desperately with my life. See if you can note what happens here. It's a, it's very chaotic. Oh, oh hello. What the heck? Shadow <laughs> run, 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 run. Oh my goodness gracious. Yep, that's oh, it. Sir. I'm hiding. Yep, and I'm hiding, and I did, and I had I'm hiding. 40 seconds. Before the mission ended, so I was just gonna hide. So <clears throat> that's uh, I love that. I love getting just blasted. You can, I don't know if you can see my paper doll here with how I have my uh, what you call it going. You can see my paper doll. How messed up my locust is here, and just the sense of narrowly escaping, like running through buildings, kind of like brushing up against buildings, have them collapse on top of me. 
and all that stuff happening and me barely surviving and I turn the corner and I mean it's like a horror movie man Goodness. it's like alien Not or whatever here like this I'm escaping I'm escaping nice. I'm running through buildings I'm using cover so he can't shoot me and I'm good I'm good man I'm like he's getting hit by other guys I'm basically safe and I turn the corner and whoa Shadowhawk that's not what I want to see looking like this on my paper doll I do not want to see this beautiful face here no sir and if you can notice here the resolution is so low you might not see it but oh he shot twice the one shot must have just barely grazed my shoulder and another one I wonder if we can slow it down maybe we can slow it down a little bit it's nice to see everything blow up though the destruction in mech 5 is spectacular alright so let's see if we can grok the times he shoots so I'm rounding the corner I think I'm in cover I think I'm safe and then boom there's one shot and then boom there's another right here boom you see it and so you, you can see the round barely shallow shallow con um, like impact the concrete and glance off because another thing that Merv Tech does is your auto cannon bullets will glance and ricochet which I really like so I almost got blasted right there and that's one of my favorite moments that was really intense especially in, in the moment playing it was just crazy it was crazy so um Real quick, another like quick round up here. So I was using a couple other mods. I was using, in particular, I was using Dark Knights, which isn't really showcased here. There's a bug with Dark Knight. So Dark Knights makes all the nighttime missions darker. So you need night vision or heat vision. Um, that's really cool. It's very atmospheric. I love that that uh, mod. the The bug is that if you ever have to restart the mission, it'll fail to apply the dark night. So it'll be nighttime, but it'll be Mech Warrior Five nighttime, not the modded nighttime. So you know, perfectly visible nighttime, which is unfortunate, but it's fine. And the other one that I think is really cool, and it gives me something I want in Mech Warrior Five is an infantry mod where uh, it'll populate little garrisons with little infantry guys that will shoot at you and they're friendly infantry in friendly garrisons as well and uh, that's really neat because they are annoying and over time they can present a real threat and they are another consideration and crucially although you know you can find uses without infantry for weapons like machine guns or flamethrowers. They call them flamers here, right? With this infantry mod, they are so annoying and they are so really dangerous over time that you really should consider putting machine guns on your mech. Or if you have machine guns on your mech, you should consider keeping them. And anything that broadens the use case for a certain type of uh, uh, a weapon in mech warrior especially one that makes sense in lore because infantry is all over lore right you know there are mechs that are riot control mechs there are mechs that are anti-infantry mechs and so the fact that you can have more explicitly anti-infantry weapons on your mech and they can make sense is great just great so i think that the infantry mod now there's several different kinds I think there's three different kinds which basically adjust the spawn rate for infantry so there's like a kind where there's hundreds of infantry in a garrison there's there's a there's a, a version of the mod that's just like you know a few and then there's one in the middle and I eventually landed on the one in the middle but I think if I were to go back I would do the, the one with the few <laughs> Because it's, it's still enough to be annoying. It's still enough to where you have to consider it. You really do have to consider it. Um, you, you have to think about the infantry. You can't just ignore them. At first you'll be fine, but eventually you got to do something about them. 
Um, and of course, just the idea that you need to think more carefully about removing machine guns from your mech. Keeping a machine gun can go a long way in that scenario. So that is what I've been doing. All those things together make, for me, the ideal mech sim. I've been playing mech sims my whole life. I don't only love mech warrior. I've played mech warrior games the most, but I grew up loving Earth Siege. Earth Siege I'll play on stream one day. I love Earth Siege. It's a great game. It's made by the people who made the original mech warrior. The one I showed you with all the blocky polygons and the colors. Um, uh, like I think Genome is a lot of fun. It's very charming. Uh, it, that was the first one where you could like get out of your robot tank and steal another one. That was a cool game from the DOS era in the mid 90s. Um, Heavy Gear, man, the Heavy Gear series is great. I adore Heavy Gear 2 as much as I and pissed off by it because there's some decisions in that game that make me mad because that game was very rushed but it still is so special it's an amazing mech game that focuses on stealth and tactics cool game um, I just love mech games and I think that to all things together uh, Mech Warrior 5 with Merc Tech with TT Rules AI with the infantry mod make the ideal mech sim for me so i'm very very i'm very sad that i didn't turn off auto update and the game updated and it broke all my mods but i'm at the same time i'm okay because i'm very happy to have been able to share it and to stream it and to make videos about it i think that mech 5 and these mods all together make just a truly special and singular game just one you don't see that often Don't get me wrong, I will come back to MechWarrior 5. The people who work on all the mods that I was using are hard at work again, and all reports say that this update didn't break the game quite as much as uh, the first DLC update did. So that's good news. Um, Maybe in a few weeks or, or a month or so, it'll come back. And I really want to play the new Call to Arms DLC. So I'll do that through Merc Tech. I will finish the campaign, and it will be on YouTube. Uh, but as for now, I'm happy to put a lid on this amazing game. Thank you so much for watching. This is the very first Mech Warrior game. Look at this. Shout out to Squee Squeegee McCoy. Look at that. I played this as a kid, and I watched my brother play this game. And honestly, I played it much later. This game is still fun. 1989. I mean, these graphics were groundbreaking. Like, legitimately, this is one of the first, one of the very early fully 3D games ever made. But really, that was the move, though. That was a tactic. Just shoot at the legs. Just go for the legs the whole time. And, of course, Mech Warrior 2, 31st Century Combat, is one of the greatest video games ever made, period. Regardless of era, genre, platform. This is one of the just truly finest video games that's ever been created. Gosh, man, what a game. I never get sick of playing or looking at this game. It's so good. Those chunky explosions, man, does not get any better than that. Elemental. Anyway, I was saying, as I was saying, 